Dean Castle in West Wales. Welcome to Kilgarin Castle. Today we're going to explore the rich history and breathtaking beauty of this medieval fortress. Kilgarin Castle was built in the early 13th century strategically positioned to overlook the Tyvee Gorge. Its impressive walls have witnessed centuries of history from Norman conquests to local Welsh battles. This 13th century ruined castle, located in Kilgerin, Pembrokeshire, near Cardigan in West Wales. The first castle on the site was thought to have been built by Gerald of Windsor around 1110, and it changed hands several times over the following century between English and Welsh forces. In the hands of William Marshall, 2nd Earl of Pembroke, the construction of the stone castle began after 1223. After passing through successive families, it was left to ruin and eventually abandoned by 1400. The castle backs on to a cliff face with the remaining ruins dating from the 13th century. It was most heavily fortified where it faces inland and includes a pair of drum towers rather than a central keep which remain standing. It passed into the hands of the National Trust in 1938. Gerald of Windsor was married to Nest, known to history as the Helen of Wales. Nest was the daughter of Rhys Ap Tudor, ruler of the Welsh Kingdom of De Herbeth. In 1109, Kilgarin was attacked by Owain Ap Cadugan, later Prince of Powys. It seems that Owen and Nest were lovers, 
and the attack was prompted by Nest, who saw it as a way to rid herself of her husband, Gerald. However, Gerald escaped his attackers by jumping through a chute into the castle cesspit. Gerald had the last laugh, however, as seven years later he killed Owen in an ambush. In 1164, Lord Rees captured Kilgarin, but it was retaken by William Marshall, Earl of Pembroke, in 1204, who built a strong round keep of stone. Welsh retook the castle under the leadership of Llewellyn Ap Lorweth, and once again the English retook it in 1223. William Marshall II launched a major rebuilding program, transforming Kilgarran into a masonry fortification. He added two large four-storey drum towers to the curtain wall and created a new outer gatehouse. Kilgarin enjoyed only a short period of use and by the late 13th century had fallen into disrepair. It was briefly 
re-fortified by Edward III in the 1370s to counter the threat of French invasion. Kilgarin was badly damaged during Owen Glendur's rising in 1405 and shortly after it passed into the Crown's hands.
Tourists used to visit Kilgarin by boating up the river from Cardigan. And artists like J. M. W. Turner were drawn to paint the romantic ruins, which are now cared for by Cardu. The castle is composed of two enclosures or wards. The outer ward is entered by a small gatehouse and contained ancillary buildings such as stables. The stone foundations of one rectangular building stands near the outer ward gatehouse. The inner ward is separated from the outer ward by a deep ditch cut into solid rock and crossed by a timber drawbridge that could be raised if danger threatened. The drawbridge leads to a gatehouse that gives access to the wide inner ward. The inner ward is defended by two large circular towers, the East Tower and West Tower, linked by a parapet walk. You can climb the East Tower and gain access to the parapet walk from here. You get wonderful views over the castle and up the wooded gorge of the river, Typhi. Below, you can also look down into the empty interior of the West Tower. One of the most impressive features of Kilgarin Castle is its twin-towered gatehouse, a formidable structure designed to intimidate and protect. As we walk through the ruins, you can still sense the grandeur and strength of this once mighty fortress. The natural beauty of this area is as captivating as the castle itself. The lush landscape and the serene river below make it easy to see why this location was chosen.
that's it. Kilgaren Castle. Hope you all enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. And we'll see you all on the next one. Keep exploring.